Well, good morning. My name is Willie Lawson, and welcome to the program. I just had to get this out. Um, over the past little bit, um, there's been a lot of awfulness and a lot of that awfulness has been wrapped around the R word. Not that R word, but that R word. Not the R E word, but the R A word. Racist. And I'm concerned because a lot of people in the urban community, a lot of black people, are that's kind of a that's kind of a dog whistle that the left uses to destroy anything that might be good from somebody who isn't from the left, who they think is their enemy. So much, in fact, that they'll even put the 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 racist word um, sort of turned into self hate on black people who don't agree with the leftist agenda for the urban community. This is alarming and problematical that. The, that, that basically white liberals are getting to do this in the urban community and getting play and getting support. It is my hope that in 2020 and going forward that what we get to do, that we can build on what we've already built, that we can build on the idea that, that the black vote isn't monolithic and, it's, and it is not to be taken for granted. I've said this on the program more than once, is that one of the bigger problems is that um, Democrats have taken the black vote for granted, while Republicans have ignored black people entirely. I saw a piece the other day that um, was basically talking to, to white conservatives Republicans more than conservatives, that the idea that in order to win or earn black votes, you're going to have to start dealing with situations in the black community, um, things that black people think are important. Uh, and this is not pandering. This is basically, if you don't think, if you don't uh, think the same things are important, if we don't think the same things are important, then we can't really work together. You know, if you aren't looking at issues that are dealing that I'm dealing with now, then we really can't work together. Um, it's like if somebody comes to you hungry, and what you want to first do is pray for them, when what they really need is food. The Salvation Army figured that out. Salvation Army said, you know what, we'll pray, we'll, we'll feed you, and we'll pray with you. And I think that that's important. So I think it's, it needs to be that sort of thing. If there are issues in the black community that need to be dealt with. Republicans could do themselves a huge favor by not pretending like they don't exist. I think that's really important. Stop pretending like they don't exist. Stop pretending like people are, are, are whining. Stop pretending like the concerns that people bring to you are not real concerns. I've seen this myself. I've seen this in my, you know, in my, in my own local community where... Um, Black Republicans bring things to the membership and that either the membership doesn't really understand or think that they can educate people who are going through it in a way that solves the problem. Sorry for the air quotes. And what I find is that a lot of the white Republicans aren't really listening because they're not, I guess they're trying to help. I guess they think what they, you know, the, the, the solutions, more air quotes, are, are obvious to them, but it's always a lot more difficult. It's always a lot more complicated. And the first thing I think that Republicans need to do, white, white Republicans especially need to do, is start asking a lot of questions and doing a lot of listening. And doing a lot of listening. Less talking. Not so much this. More this. More this. This is how you're going to continue to move forward. And 
this idea that everything in the you know what in the movement in the party is based on a candidate um, that there's a political solution for everything is problematical because w what we know is that it is the political class that have caused a lot of the strife and poverty and danger and hopelessness in the black community and to leave them for the solution is foolish to solve a problem that they that a lot of them have, have created it seems silly and um what we're finding out now is i think that people are really starting to to sort of get this realization that there are a lot of problems that the political class really don't want solved they want to talk about they want to talk about because they make great campaign issues and they jack people up but no one's really interested in the solution no one's interested this this whole idea about illegal immigration you know what donald trump ain't the first one to bring up illegal immigration as a problem in america Every president in my lifetime has brought this up as a problem, including Barack Obama, including Bill Clinton, and, and even including um, Jimmy Carter. So um, Reagan, Ford, Bush, Bush um, have all said that this is, you know, that illegal immigration is a problem. So it's interesting that in all this time, in 35, 40 years, that nothing really of any consequence has been done. Why? Because it makes a better campaign issue than it does actually solving the problem. Which is really, in my opinion, why Trump is getting so much pushback, because no one's really interested in solving this problem. And the same things go for the, you know, for what's happening in the black community. Um, the same thing goes with um, making sure people have good schools making sure that there's economic opportunity. Those are great talking points for campaigns. And now we have talking points of campaigns that, that go something like this. We have to make sure that, that this economy and the, the works for everybody, that this system works for everybody. Uh, well, it does. Now, why, isn't, why is it working better for some than others? Then those are particulars that we need to get into. And I don't think that those are political solutions. Um, any of the encumberments to those solutions have been caused by politics and politicians. So to continue to allow them to have the 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 power or the or give them the authority to solve more air quotes to solve these problems is probably not the way to go. Uh, and when they talk about it, maybe we don't maybe we shouldn't take them at their word. Maybe we shouldn't take them at their word. So I think that this is something that I think is, is something that, that, that is shifting, a paradigm that is shifting that we need, need to move forward on. There's a lot going on. Basically, when a politician or uh, someone gets stamped with the RA, the racist stamp, maybe we should wait to see if it really sticks. Not just give a Pavlov's uh, response to someone deeming someone racist and I don't have any foreknowledge of that. Or someone may have done something that someone else will tell you is racist that very well may not be. That can't be the only metric that we use. That's all I'm saying here this morning. Racism or someone being called racist cannot be the only metric that we use. That we have to use a spectrum of metrics to decide who is worthy of leadership, a spectrum. And basically that spectrum is what, what we call here um, co dinner table politics. How is this house doing? Are the policies that are in, that are in effect benefiting this house? And not conflating things that don't go together. Not fighting other people's battles. And I know that sounds terrible to say out loud, but I don't care. Not fighting other people's battles. The fact of the, the, fact of the matter is that the LGBTQ, LMNOP, QRS, DOV battle is not my battle. 
we are not allies and I don't have to be an ally. It is perfectly okay to say, I don't care. Y'all do whatever you want. I got people right here in this house that I'm con that I'm more concerned with. Who are not part of the LGBTQ LMNOP um, community. It's, it's not. So I don't have to be an ally. And I don't have to. And if I'm not an ally, it doesn't necessarily mean I'm an enemy. I... I basically, I, I don't smoke pot. I've never smoked pot. I don't think pot should be legalized. Uh, but you know what? If you want to smoke pot, I'm probably, I'm not going to, I'm not going to stop you. I'm not going to wrestle you to the ground and, and, and take the joint out of your hand. I'm not going to, I'm not going to break up all, all, all your bongs. I'm not going to, but if someone asks me like in a referendum or a vote of some sort, I'm going to say no. It's not my concern. I'm learning here in my um, my middle age that I cannot be concerned with everything. I am too old to be a soft shell turtle where everything that somebody says, oh, it hurts. I can't believe they said, said that. That's terrible. That's one of our things to say. Can't get like that. So I'm not like that. I suggest you not be that way either. All right, listen. Um, I want to tell everybody to um, look for the program To the Heart of the Matter on iHeart.com. To the Heart of the Matter. It is a continuation of the Willie Lawson Show from Blog Talk Radio. And it's all, the To the Heart of the Matter is also on Spreaker. It's on Spotify. And uh, it is, I do put some of those episodes on Blog Talk Radio as well. So check them out. Uh, I think there's a couple of videos here. Uh, I think one of the videos that's probably going to show up in the end screen is the last one I did. So check that out. Till we see you again, go out there and learn something. Love somebody. For goodness sakes, y'all take care of yourself. We'll see you when we see you. Peace.